Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Latif, and uh, welcome to Good Night Freestyle. Uh, this is episode 18. So we're doing pretty good. I appreciate it. I um, I actually look forward to this time every night. Um, still nerve wracking. Um, I don't know. I it, it's it's relaxing. Uh, it gives me a chance to kind of unwind. I try to do it as late as possible, but before midnight, because I, I want to stay within the day. Uh, but I want to go as late as possible, um, because it seems like the later I get, the, the more I want to get on here and and, and 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 just talk, you know. So w- one thing I want to bring up, though, yesterday. I didn't bring this up, but yesterday I was um, going through some some Facebook posts and some old ones came up, and I saw a couple that were on Freestyle Against Phonies plus a couple other pages, and um, and it had to do with a lot of the artists that have never really cracked the code. You know what I mean? They've been around forever. They've been performing. They probably have more music available than any other artists. A lot of them are really great people. I mean, I know prob- a lot of them. I don't even know if I want to say most of them. Because I think over the years, a lot of... N- I say new artists, but this is the deal. They're new artists, but they're not young artists. And this is, I think, what is different with freestyle. And I, I'm, I'm trying to talk about this very delicately. I don't want to offend anyone because it's never my intention. It's just my observation, and I'm hoping that others can see it the way I, I do. It's not a bad thing at all. In fact, it might even be a good thing. But it feels sometimes like we're the only genre that still has an older generation, I'm talking about 40s and 50s, who are still, when I say dreaming, but I say dreaming in a positive way because I'm still dreaming. I still dream of big things. I still dream of a certain level of success. I still dream of writing a hit book, a bestseller. I still dream of, you know, a billion views on my vlogs. I still dream of hundreds of thousands of people listening to my podcast. So dreaming is cool. Dreaming probably isn't cool if you're just laying around dreaming. But if dreaming is just a part of the process, then it's fine. In fact, it's it's necessary. But but let's let's look at it like this for a second here, okay? In our genre, an artist ha- that we probably are just learning about now. Now, they could have been performing and writing songs and singing for 40 years, but we never heard of them. We never heard of them. Out of nowhere, they come out of the woodwork, and in a, a short period of time, they're pretty much able to establish this, establish themselves within the genre, not meaning that they're blowing up and they're headlining or they're doing these major concerts or they're making a ton of money. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying they're able to step in to the community and be accepted as a part of it. That's not common with other genres. Think about it. First of all, in hip hop, you might get a few, 
but you really don't have any of the older generation, again, 40s and 50s, still trying to break in. A lot of them tried when they were in their teens and 20s, maybe in 30s, and then after that, they pretty much, it became a hobby. The dream has ended. I think this is the same for rock. Um, maybe Latin might be the only other thing. You know, maybe it's a Latin thing. Who knows? Yeah, again, this is an observation. I'm not stepping to this topic with any statistics or any research or any proof. It's just an observation of what I see. And the way I write it off is at that it is part of the persona. It's it's part of this freestyle culture. This is this is what we do. The hip hop, the rappers, you'll see most of the rappers are still pretty young. Still pretty young. However, with freestyle, we could find 40s and 50 year olds pretty much anywhere. And a lot of them just basically are just breaking in like recently. So it's not like, <coughs> excuse me, it's not like they were a part of the scene for 30 years and they just never really popped, but everybody knows them. Talking about, we didn't know them yesterday and we know them today. Me personally, I like it. I really do. Now, that doesn't mean you could call me and all of a sudden I could put you on my roster and we could start booking you all over the all over the country. That's not typical. There's still it's still a business and there's still a system that's a part of that. I've mentioned this before. Promoters are looking for people who can sell tickets. Promoters are not interested in promoting your career. That's just not all my career, your any angel's career, nobody. They want to sell tickets. And whoever can sell tickets at the best possible price are the people that they put on. So, has nothing to do with that. Um, but anybody who's talking about, and I've heard people get really downright and ugly telling these people that they need to give up where they come from. They don't belong doing this. They sound horrible. They're an embarrassment. They're messing up the genre. I think that's all ridiculous. I think it's all stupid. What I got to say to anyone still out there, I don't care if you're 75 years old and yesterday you decided you wanted to be a freestyle artist. If this genre can help fulfill any part of that dream, then welcome, then welcome. If that's what we're going to be known for, then I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I really don't. You know, good music or, you know, good talent is going to be recognized, especially on social media. You have to be prepared with the, with the fans. You know, fans are fans. And social media is social media. And people can get nasty. And sometimes they get nasty for no reason no particular reason just because a lot of times they're just nasty people even if they don't like your work sometimes there's no reason to be nasty if you're asking opinions okay all right well you're asking an opinion you have better be prepared if I ask people to let me know what you feel about my books I better be prepared I'm telling people to go and leave a review on Amazon for my books, if you read it. I'm not saying leave, it, leave a good review. Sometimes I say that. But not all the time. I really don't. I ask for a review. And there's a good chance that that review can be negative. And if it's negative, it's going to be recorded on Amazon for everyone to see. So I have to take the good with the bad. If I want to hear the good, then I have to be prepared to to hear the bad. The same thing with with, with the podcast and everything else I do. I get the thumbs up, but I got to be prepared for the thumbs downs. I get them. I get a lot of them. Does it hurt? Absolutely. Because we're not coming, I'm not coming on here 
to this to be disappointing. I'm not coming out here to not entertain people. I'm not coming out here to to just babble. That's not my intentions. My intention is to come out here and you know hopefully give you some valuable information that maybe you can use and maybe you can you could do something with it. Maybe something could kick off for you and it was because of something I said. I, that's a great thing, whether I ever find out that that happened or not. Just the fact that it did is is a wonderful thing. I don't come on here to be an ass so that way people can give me a thumbs down. It's not what I want to do. I, it's not what I want to do. And a lot of these artists that are out there, you know, maybe they maybe they stepped on the stage because a, a relative, a loved one, a mother, a, a wife, husband, told them, hey, you know, you're really talented. You know, that's a rough one sometimes because beauty is always in the eyes of the beholder. You know, no one's cuter to you. No, no You're not cuter to anyone than you are to, to your mother or your spouse or a family, you know? And, and you know, family and loved ones always try to look for the best. And you don't have to be the best, but they look for it. 90% could be bad. But all they're going to zero in on is that little 10%. And they're going to encourage you. And that's going to take you to a point where you want to give it a shot. And I say give it a shot. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Now... One thing I like to bring up, though, and this has to be understood, is if is if you are selling CDs or T-shirts or tickets to your show or whatever it is that you're soliciting, and people are not interested, you can't take it personal. You really can't. It doesn't help you for people who don't like your stuff to support you. That's not support. That's not support. Because all that's going to give you is false hope. It's going to make you think that you're this bomb and you're really not. And what's going to happen there is you're not going to get any better. You have nothing to shoot for. Remember, perfection, practice doesn't make perfection. Perfection makes permanence. In other words, if you're practicing the wrong shit, if you're practicing wrong and no one's there to either tell you or you are not open enough to realize it, then all you're going to be doing is embedding that that you're learning, which is, is incorrect. You're going to embed it into you, who you are and your performance and your voice. If you are hitting a bad note, but you practice a thousand hours a day, all you're going to do is embed that bad note. If you are doing a dance step that is whack as hell, and all you have is people that say, yo, that shit was dope. And you keep on practicing that bad step. All you're going to do is embed it into who you are. You're not going to get better. So when you're putting out new material and you have to get mad at people because they're not supporting you, oh, no, man, no, don't. you can't take it like that. If people don't like the food you're cooking, they shouldn't have to eat it. But take that as a, as a measuring stick. Take that as, as an alert, man. That's actually a good thing if you use it the right way. You know, look at the numbers, you know, when it comes to that. You know, okay, what is it people are liking? You know, what are people... Let me try to strive a little bit more for for, you know... You know, maybe maybe it's, you know, ask the right questions. Be open. Don't be offensive. Talk to people who are not going to sugarcoat everything you do. As if you're really serious about it. Now, if you're content with what you're doing, so or by all means, do it. You know, of course, the ultimate thing is, 
And, and this goes without saying this is why I don't say it. And it's kind of like contradictory to what I just said, but you have to enjoy what you, what you do. You see, if you're building, if you're working too much towards a formula and not on what you enjoy, then that whole artist shit kind of disappears. See, artists don't give a damn what anyone thinks. In fact, artists expect people to not like their shit. Artists expect people to, to you know, not understand their work. So if you want to claim yourself to be an artist, then it, this is what it comes with. So you ha- you know you have to you have to. This is very important to understand. Now, if it's all about the money, and you can see this with a lot of the major labels back in the days, really mostly, everything was a formula. If something did well, what they did is they try to recreate that. They try to do something similar. Movies do it all the time. Something does well. Okay, vampires are in. Now everybody wants to do a vampire movie. It's still going to be about how good the movie is. But at least the interest is there. kind of puts them in there. Now you have to show and prove. We know that there's a market for freestyle. We don't have to test that. We know that. There's a market. You got people like Stevie B putting out new music. Doing a whole new photo shoot. We can't hate on that. That's, that's, that's great. He's proving to us that this shit is real. And this goes with, with everybody else who, who takes it to that level, who does that. These are the people that are going to help sustain it while you guys get it together. They're going to keep the gates open. You just got to get yourself through it. You can't expect them to carry you through it. All they're going to do is open the gates and hold them open for us. We still have to do the work to get through the gates. But what I don't want people to do is be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. Yo, freestyle is an incredible genre of music. We are so, so blessed. The entire culture is is phenomenal. You know, I look at each and every one of these artists. I think about the things they've done. You know, I, I don't try to get too deep or too personal with any of them. I, I don't try to go too deep into, because that could get, you know, I'm at, at a real, from a real, I'm at a really weird angle. I'm, a, I'm an agent. So I have the ability to get pretty close to these artists. These artists tell me things that they don't tell most people. A lot of them I know their financial situations, which I would never reveal to no one so I'm at a very unique angle with them but still it's important to to keep a certain distance so that we, we can really understand them as an artist yeah it's really hard it's hard for me to really to describe what it is that I you know articulate what I'm trying to get through here but um just keep doing what you guys are doing, man. I think it's, I think it's, I think it's great. If you need some encouragement, and that doesn't mean tag me, please. <laughs> I don't need everybody's records on my page. I usually delete them. If you post, if you're tagging me with something that is mine, a lot of times if I want it on my page, I'll just hide it. But um, just keep doing what you're doing. You know, I don't mind you uh, asking me a question. I don't mind you. I mean, you can message me. Uh, find a way to get in touch with me somehow if you need to ask a question. You know, I mean, if I can answer it, I can help you guys out. I will. I will. Getting onto my roster is a whole other ball game. I get calls from from new artists every single day, and a lot of them are really, really dope. And it's not even just freestyles. Old school, I mean, it's hip hop, R and B, rap. I mean, but these people I look at, they really, they're really not doing their homework. If they're contacting me, they don't know what I'm about, you know, which is very important. Before you go and reach outside the circle, do your research as to who you're approaching. 
because that's a that's a turn off and that's something that they tell you right away that, yeah you don't you're not really taking it serious you're just spamming everyone with your with your info hoping that someone catches it and that's the lazy way of doing it you know but what happens is we could tell when an email or a package comes that it was pretty much very general you didn't you didn't target anyone individually you know with me as an agent for freestyle it goes with the classics right now i would like to maybe later on represent some of the new acts but now you guys have to do that work first you your managers your producers you have to get yourself to that level and then once you get to that level and there's an interest then that's the best time to come to me and say hey would you like to you know to book us of course yeah because there's already a demand for you it's not like i have to break ground i shouldn't have to call any of my buyers and tell them who you are send them your demo that's ridiculous okay so you know my buyers they come to me telling me who they want so I should be able to mention your name and they should already be able to sing your song and say, oh yeah, I love that track. Can you get him or can you get her? Oh yeah, I could. This is what, this, you know, this is, here's the information. This is their feed. This is what they need. You know, that's how that works. So, but you know, I just wanted to get on real quick, man, and, and let you guys know, all you guys who are hustling, I know who you are. I know pretty much all of you. You know I know you. <laughs> I watch you. I see you. Um, yo, keep doing what you're doing, man. Just keep doing what you're doing. I'm telling you, trust me. Don't give up. Don't listen to none of these these people. I don't care who it is. Don't listen to them. If you got a dream and freestyle could somehow fulfill that dream or at least, you know, give you some sort of hope, then it's a beautiful thing, man. And I'm very proud to be a part of this. So, okay, guys, so... I'm going to call it quits for the night. I appreciate it. I just wanted to bring that up. It's Saturday night. Be safe if you guys are out. Be careful. Enjoy yourself. And until tomorrow, good night freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.